Welcome back to Don's Life, welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. You may remember several months ago, I reviewed one of these. This is for one car stereo. It's a CarPlay Android Auto AI box. It allows you to add things like Netflix, YouTube, a number of apps from the Google Play Store, such as Disney Plus, to this box to watch on your infotainment screen. But you're not necessarily gonna use all the features that that box is capable of. So the folks for a fraction of the price from One Car Stereo sent me the AI Box Lite, which gives you several of the popular options from the previous box that I reviewed, but again, at a lesser price point, and maybe with the things that you're gonna get the most use out of. So let's take a closer look. So let's talk about some of the main features. So first of all, this takes any wired CarPlay compatible infotainment system, even some aftermarket stereos, which we'll get into in a little bit, and it allows you to add wireless CarPlay or wireless Android Auto. You can see a full compatibility list of the different models that you can connect to to add those features. Again, you have to have wired CarPlay compatibility. Once you have it all set up, it'll automatically connect wirelessly to your iPhone or your Android phone as long as it's compatible without you having to configure it again. Two of the biggest features it has, it will already be loaded to let you watch Netflix or YouTube right out of the box. It also includes a media player. So if you have a USB drive with a number of media files on it, whether it be audio or video, you'll plug it in here and you'll be able to access those and play them on your screen. They've also added a weather app integrated right into your dashboard. So not only would you have, you know, temperature, which a lot of vehicles do, you'll actually get to see the local weather, which is cool. Let's talk about some of the pros and maybe some of the limitations when it comes to the AI Box Lite versus the original AI Box. The AI Box Lite, like I said earlier, is much more compatible with a wide array of wired CarPlay units right from the factory. So if you don't want to replace head units or like I'm in a Cadillac Escalade right now, I cannot change the infotainment system in this vehicle. If I wanna add Netflix, I need to rely on a box like this. I can't hook up my phone directly to this screen and have it play in there. Rear screen, sure, there's ways to do that with special cables, but if I want the information on this box displayed up here, well, I need to use this, not my phone. So it has more compatibility with OEM units if they have wired CarPlay compatibility. We'll do a demonstration in a bit. It also works with popular brands like Alpine, Pioneer, Kenwood. And if you have an aftermarket Android based unit, as long as it's Android 10 or newer, it should be compatible with that too. For a full list of their compatible units, go to onecarstereo.com's website and check out the compatibility. This has Netflix and YouTube preloaded. So does the original AI box, but the original AI box did give you connectivity to the Google Play Store. You could add extra apps, you could add Disney Plus, you could do a whole host of extra things, but it costs much more money to do that. If you don't need any of those things and you're happy with just YouTube and Netflix and a media player, then put this one aside and go with the AI box Lite because you just plug it in. It's simple, limited options, but those things work and they work well. So some of the drawbacks, first off, you'll see there's limited ports on here. There's the interface port to connect it to your vehicle. And then there's a USB port here to hook up some flash media if you have some media files. There is no spot for a SIM card or a nano SIM card. So this does need to tether with your hotspot on your phone, or if you're getting free internet, if you're you know near a building that's broadcasting free internet, uh, if you're at home within your Wi-Fi network, that's where you're going to get internet from. It does not have a SIM card slot. So the operating system on this box is updatable, but it is restricted from being able to customize it by adding apps and things like that, which could be a good thing because you want to be able to just plug it in and have Netflix and YouTube work as an example. Um, on the other box, if you went to do those things and meddled around with it a little bit, it was quite easy to accidentally make Netflix stop working and things like that. So to avoid having to reset your box to factory settings just to get the apps working the way they originally did. Um, this limits you on what you can do with that so you don't accidentally put yourself in that position. Now again, if you really wanna do customizing and I have a video of me using this box here to run OBD2 port scanning to check the different vehicle diagnostics. I have it set up to control my lighting for my light bar and my rock lights and things like that. So if you want all the customizing that comes with having a fully fledged Android device in your vehicle, then maybe you want to go with the original AI box. 
But if you don't need any of that stuff, again, and I'm repeating myself, just go with the AI Box Lite and you'll be able to get Netflix and YouTube, the weather and a media player, and it just works. So let's get into the demonstration. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna plug it into our USB-C port right here. Now, once you've had this set up, it will load a little bit quicker because one thing it's going to do is it's going to detect the resolution of the screen that it's gonna be connecting to and it will need to turn off and back on to adjust to that resolution. So right now I'm in this Cadillac. If I went to go in my truck, which has a different size screen, it would shut off and turn back on again just to get that resolution going. So as you can see, the interface is pretty slick. It's simple, I really like that. So along the side here, you have some icons. This is our home screen, this is go back. This shows us our Bluetooth is connected to a phone right now and this is for USB. CarPlay shortcut, and then our Wi-Fi, I'm in the garage, I have a bit of a signal. Here is the weather that I can set up based on the city that I live in, set the time, see the forecast. Let's go to CarPlay just to do a demonstration. It's connecting to the phone. This little icon here is just a shortcut that you can put wherever you want. As you can see, we got our CarPlay up and we can have access to all of our CarPlay apps just like you would with wireless CarPlay. So that's hooked up wirelessly right now with a secondary phone. Now, if I wanted to leave here, I can bring up this little icon, but you could just hit back there. Or if you have an infotainment control knob, I can just hit back here and it'll take me to previous screens in CarPlay. I can hit home and I can go completely out to my, my infotainment system from factory. I can just go back to CarPlay like that. So depending on what buttons you have available, you can get around pretty easily. In this case, for me to leave CarPlay on here, I can use this little icon, I can hit back, and it takes me to this screen. Now let's check out Netflix. All right, we got Netflix loaded. Let's just pick something family friendly. Let's pick some Formula One, hit play. Just gotta load up, obviously. And my internet's not great in the garage. I remember as a kid, and I could hear the echo through the city. It's like this scream. When they get into a 200 mile an hour car. So that works pretty good. And you can see like the screen size in here, that's probably an eight inch diagonal, maybe hard to tell on the phone. Um, but there we go. We have Netflix in the car and it's working well. Okay, let's check out YouTube. So I'm just gonna go to the apps here. You can see we have YouTube, that's our video player, that's our music player, and then we already saw Netflix. And then of course we have settings where we can customize everything. So that's something you can you know look at doing on your own if you pick up one of these. I'm going to go to YouTube. There we go. YouTube looks like it's working fine. We'll just pick a video here. I'm sure everybody's watching these cases right now. He brought my dad out to London with my best friends. And There's YouTube working. Uh, Johnny has asked me permission for your hand in marriage. So there we go. YouTube works fine. And so with the media player, you can hook up a USB stick here, but it does have some demo material on it already, so I'll just use that. So there's a trailer here for a Fast and Furious movie. All right, let's get to work. Hey, Rome, are you freaking out? No. Yes, you are. <laughs> Should somebody just walk me through what we're supposed to be doing? <laughs> So that works just fine, just like advertised. And we have our music app right here, and there's some media already on here. So very straightforward, simple interface. So as you can see, you have your apps here. You have this tile look if you choose to do it that way, and you can exit and go right back to all of your original screens, and you no longer have to look at that if you don't want to. 
All right, that's the review of the AI Box Lite. I'll leave a link to this one in the description below, as well as a link to the original in the description below. But if you like today's video, hit that like button. Please consider subscribing, and we'll talk to you next time.